The concept of trend following has been around for decades because its underlying logic is very simple to follow. You aim to buy here, right at the inception of a new trend, and hold on to your position for as long as the trend is present in the market. Now, despite the simplicity of trend following trading logic, not every trend following strategy actually works long term. What I noticed myself during the course of my research is that some of the simplest trend following strategies are actually the most robust and reliable ones. My name is David from Critical Trading and in this video I'm going to share with you two of such strategies. We're going to be looking at two profitable algorithmic trend following strategies where we'll go through the example trades a complete list of the rules, their backtest results, as well as their performance analysis. Let's start. The first system I want to share today is called Bollinger Bands Breakout. Now, I've known about the Bollinger Bands for a long time now, but always as a mean reversion timing tool, i.e. used to time a trade in a sideways market or against the trend. This application, however, uses them in just the opposite way, as a trend-following trading indicator. I've got two Bollinger Bands plotted on the screen. Both bands are based on 100 candlestick bars. The buy signal gets generated when the market closes above the top yellow Bollinger Band, so here, and the exit signal gets generated when the market closes below the bottom yellow band, which is here. The red dashed line I've got plotted on the chart as well represents my basic stop loss that I will be using in backtests and is based on an indicator called ATR or average true range. I will get to that in a second. Now, what we can see on this particular example is that this system at first sight is able to catch some potentially profitable moves in the market and it does keep holding onto its winning positions for long periods of time. We can see that there is a lot of room in between the price and the bottom band, meaning that the position has got enough room and the system keeps holding onto it even during some significant price swings, which is an absolute key for any trend following strategy. Now, before we look at the results and the equity curves, let's go over the complete list of rules very quickly. An important thing to mention here with regards to the Bollinger Bands settings is that both bands are used in a period of 100, meaning they're calculated based on 100 price bars. However, the buy signal gets generated when the market closes above the Bollinger Band that's based on the third standard deviation, whereas the sell signal gets generated when the market closes below the Bollinger Band based on the first standard deviation. So despite the both bands are based on 100 days, they're using slightly different settings by default. Now I'm conducting the backtest as long only, holding a maximum of 10 stocks at any given time. In case of too many signals being generated at the same time, exceeding the maximum of 10 open positions, signals are ranked based on their three-month historical volatility, where the lower the historical volatility of a given stock is, the higher its ranking. Now these are some of my standard backtesting settings that I use when backtesting my strategies on stocks. So if you watched some of my previous videos, this will be quite familiar to you. On top of this, I'm using the standard market regime filter of S&P 500 being above its 200-day simple moving average at the time of entry. If this is not true, meaning that the S&P 500 is below its 200-day moving average, the signal is not valid. The reason I'm using the S&P 500 is that I'm conducting this backtest on all stocks that belong to S&P 500. Lastly, I'm using a basic stop loss that's calculated based on a multiple of ATR's value. ATR indicator or average true range is an indicator that measures stock's volatility or the magnitude of its movements, in other words. The reason I'm anchoring the size of my stop loss to this value is that I want to ensure that my stop loss is based on the actual size of the stock's movements as opposed to just using a fixed value. I've got a great video about how to use ATR indicator. Highly recommend that you check it out. Link in the description. Now on to the second trend following trading strategy. This strategy doesn't use any traditional indicators but works with a uh, rather simple logic instead. The logic is that if the trend is about to take place in the market, and let's say that it will result in a stock's price rising by 100% in a year, it logically needs to rise by 10, 15 or 20% first. And the last number, the 20%, is exactly what this strategy works with. This strategy takes 20% and adds it to the most recent lowest low of the stock's price over a certain time period. 
Over here on this example, I've got this level shown in turquoise line. It is the price low multiplied by 1.20. So here we can see the most recent price low at around $5 per share. And then when we add the 20% on top, we arrive at this level, which is around $6 per share. This level, as you can presume, is the level at which this strategy buys, so enters long if the market closes above it. In this particular case, buy signals got generated here, also over here and here. Now, what about the sell signals? The sell signals of this strategy are based on similar logic, but instead of using lows, price highs are used in the calculation instead. I've plotted our second level on the screen now. The yellow level is used as a basis for sell signals. As I just mentioned, it is calculated using price highs rather than lows, and its value is again calculated using the fixed 20% figure. But this time, logically, the 20% is actually taken off the price high by taking the price high and simply multiplying it by 0.80. And as you can imagine, the sell signal is generated when the stock's price closes below this level. So here, for example, going through all signals visible on this chart, one buy signal was generated here when the price um, closed above the turquoise level. Exit associated with it got generated here, so the position uh, would have been closed at that point. And then another long position got generated here and exited here. We can see that this system seems to have some potential to it too. What's clear also is that it manages to keep holding onto its positions for longer periods. Particularly this area is interesting where it managed to withstand a rather deep pullback and kept holding onto its position. As with the previous strategy, let's go over the complete rules list. The buy signal is generated when the stock's price is 20% up from the lowest price low over the past 50 days. The logic of this is that if the new trend is about to start and the stock's price ends up rallying by, say, 100%, then it logically needs to rise by 20% first, which is when this system aims to buy that stock. The sell signal is generated using the opposite logic, but using the highest price high instead. Sell when the stock is 20% down from its highest high over the past 50 days. The rest of the rules is pretty much identical to the ones I used in the backtest of the first system. Strategy holds a maximum of 10 open positions simultaneously and in case of excess signals uses a ranking mechanism based on stock's three month historical volatility. The lower the historical volatility of the stock is, the better and the higher the ranking as the stock has been historically making less volatile movements which is more favorable. Same as with the previous strategy, I'm using index filter but this time it's based on Russell 3000 index as I'm conducting the backtest of this particular strategy on Russell 3000 stocks. Same stop loss based on the multiple of ATR that's based on the past 20 days. And finally, let's have a look at the equity curves. The yellow equity curve is the 20% strategy, the one that uses 50-day lows and highs. The turquoise line is the Bollinger Band breakout system that uses the top Bollinger Band to buy. And the red curve is the buy and hold of S&P 500 which represents the performance of your capital if you just bought the S&P 500 instead. Now, at the first glance, we can see a huge drawdown area that's mainly visible on the red equity, which is the stock index. This is, of course, the global financial crisis of 2008. A very important thing to point out here is that the equity curves are flat roughly halfway through this area. And this is because they are both using the index filter where both of them open new trades only if the underlying index, so either S&P 500 or Russell 3000, is above its 200-day moving average. The buy and hold doesn't uh, employ this rule as it's simply simulating how your equity would have looked like if you just bought the index and held it without doing anything else. Another interesting area is here where the Bollinger system is in drawdown, but both the S&P and the other systems aren't. The most recent drawdown that's relating to the beginning of 2020 is visible in this area where the equities of both systems went down significantly and very quickly and actually have not recovered since. 
On the other hand, the S&P 500 has managed to recover. Now let's have a look at the backtest reports as well. The report to the left belongs to the 20% strategy and the report on the right relates to the Bollinger Band trend following strategy. Let's start with the average annual return. Both strategies are showing a comparable annual return figure. However, pay attention to the number of trades. The 20% strategy had recorded only 116 trades over the course of the backtest. Now, bear in mind that this is from the beginning of 2002 to the end of 2020. This goes hand in hand with the average trade hold time of 366 days. So we're talking about an ultra slow trading strategy here. The Bollinger Band system recorded more trades, 292, which however still puts it into the ultra slow trading system category for me. As far as the win rate is concerned, both systems are again very similar, around 50%, which is typical for a trend following system. Trend following systems uh, make money by having their profits significantly bigger than their losses. In both cases, the average profitable trade is over three times the size of an average losing trade. As far as the risk is concerned, the maximum drawdown of the Bollinger Band strategy is about 21% whereas the 20% strategy shows a figure of 26%. Now let's revisit the equity curves so that I can point out something very important in connection to the performance of these strategies or just slower swing trading strategies in general. Most beginners would consider the performance that I just showed you a second ago not to be very appealing and would almost certainly scrap these systems and carry on looking for something with much, much higher annual return figures. Now, these are not final strategies by any means, but rather act as a starter blueprint for further analysis or development. I myself don't trade these strategies and have more sophisticated models in my own portfolio. Despite that, the performance of these strategies is um, actually not bad at all. The problem is that most beginners who are just starting out and as a result do not fully understand the relationship between the risk and reward in trading generally look for something that's making money all the time regardless of the market conditions. And that's of course a huge mistake as nothing like that exists, especially if we're talking about systematic strategies that can be written in the form of a code like these two. The point I'm trying to make here is that even if the strategy has a losing period, like uh, the one we're looking at the screen here, 2008, it doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't work or it's doing bad. The problem is that most people do not compare the performance of their system to anything. And so they're logically going to resort to thinking that when the drawdown comes, the strategy is doing badly. In reality though, it can actually be doing quite well, just like on this particular example when we compare it to the wider stock market which is the red equity curve. Despite both strategies had lost and gone into drawdown, i.e. a losing period, they both stopped trading about halfway through the highlighted area on the screen and successfully preventing any further losses. On top of this, their drawdown was around 21 and 26% respectively, which is still kind of manageable, whereas the index fell by over 50% at this stage. Furthermore, both strategies managed to recover their losses in significant shorter time than the index. So to conclude, the performance of these slow swing strategies needs to be benchmarked against something. You should not really be looking at the profit figures in isolation as doing so is missing the wider context. As far as these strategies are concerned, they're definitely a great starting point for further development and analysis. I would definitely recommend myself to work on exits with an aim to shorten the trade whole time and increase the trade frequency. Thanks for watching. David at Critical Trading, signing out.